Morissette, the Vice Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It is 6 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, August 15, 2019. We are meeting at one government center in the committee hearing room. This is a meeting of a local public body and as such is subject to the provisions of our Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, commonly known as the Open Meeting Law. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, Subsection F, I hereby notify all persons in attendance that this meeting is being reported with both video and audio devices. Our reporting secretary this evening is Brittany Faria, the lady to my left. <coughs> She's recording an audio version and follower of government TV, Alex Mello, is recording both a video and audio version. If anyone desires to make an audio, video, or combination recording thereof, please notify me now and I shall make a public announcement of your intention. Present this evening are permanent members from my left to right are John Frank III, James Calkins, and alternate members Dan Dupere and David Saber. The gentleman to my immediate right is William Roth, the Director of Planning for the City of Fall River. Brittany, have all petitions to be considered and properly advertised and all interested parties notified in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals and Mass Term Laws Chapter 40A is amended. Yes. I declare the August 15, 2019 regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall regularly come before it. I would remind all persons present presenting before the board, including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support or anyone opposed to the petition, that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chair. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I hereby advise the petitioners and all interested persons that this board is a zoning board of appeals. This board's authority exists pursuant to our Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the Ordinances of the City of Fall River. <coughs> Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use which is the subject of the petition before the Zoning Board this evening. The clerks in the building, planning, engineering, and licensing departments are competent in the discharge of their duties as clerks. They are not lawyers, however, and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate. I urge all petitioners to seek legal counsel before filing your petitions and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a city <coughs> ordinance 2015-11 section 10-1 requiring site plan reviews. A copy of the ordinance is available at the city clerk's office or from the planning department. I remind everyone that the building inspector is a zoning enforcement authority and you are here this evening because the building inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the City of Fall River's zoning ordinances. The newly adopted City Charter Section 9-18 mandates that all multiple member bodies develop and adopt rules or policy for public comment. We have adopted such a policy, which in short provides for citizen input on zoning board specific matters at the end of this meeting. A sign-in sheet is available on the table at the back of the room. Finally, I disclose that an official copy of the Vault River Zoning Ordinance is available at the City Clerk's Office. One cannot rely on the online zoning ordinances. Are there any questions before we begin? Okay, we'll start with uh, Petition 01, Franklin Service Auto Care LLC, 1101 North Main Street. It was continued from the July 18, 2019 meeting. It's a various request to demolish the existing non-conforming canopy and auto repair structures and to construct a new canopy and 2,080 square foot convenience store, no auto repairs, waiving requirements in the A2 district, lot size 13,085 plus or minus square feet. Now, for this uh, petition, we would only have a four-member board. Alternate, uh, David Saber cannot sit for this. So before we proceed, uh, is that something you would like to proceed with a four-member board, or would you prefer to postpone it to a future meeting? Uh, four member boards, you need four out of four, so okay. I think we're good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Could you then? Sure. 
All right, good evening, Madam Chair, member of the board. My name is Hal Chuba. I'm a consulting engineer with offices at 112 State Road in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. We did appear before this board last month for this petition. As you stated, this is we seek a relief from the setbacks in the A2 district. The uh, both the existing structures right now that exist there, the existing non-conforming structures. So we, we propose to, to demolish the two existing structures, move them back <coughs> closer to the back property line so we can improve the, the traffic circulation around the pumps and provide parking in front of the building. This is a great uh, improvement over what's there now. At the last meeting, Mr. Ross had a few comments on the site layout to improve and tweak the site, and we did go back, and in fact, we did revise the site plan to address all his comments. I'll briefly go through them. Uh, we did reduce the number of pumps from four to three. If, if, I, if you recall, at the last meeting, our, uh, uh, if you want me to set up on the easel, would that be easier? This is yeah, fine. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah, you have the plan. So the previous plans showed four pumps. Uh, we did reduce the number of pumps to three. We did also close the uh, 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 driveway at the intersection, and we did reduce the curb cut on President Avenue from 70 feet to 34 feet. And those are the comments that this this plan uh, addresses all the comments that Mr. Ross had. And then this we're back here, I guess. Do any members of the board have questions? Is there anyone here in favor of the petition? Is there anyone here opposed to the petition? Mr. Roth, do you have any comments? Yes, um, the applicant had literally addressed everything that I, uh, that I had uh, raised at the last meeting. Uh, I am uh, fine with the plan and the layout as uh, stated. I would request that the, the waivers need to be specific. It's a front yard of 18 feet, a rear yard of four feet. The north side setback is 5.7. The south side setback for the canopy is 16 feet, and the south side setback for the building is 13.2 based on the plans. And I would recommend uh, requiring, uh, in the decision, requiring site plan review. Other than that, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's a far better plan and uh, is uh, acceptable. I move uh, acceptance. Uh, condition upon uh, for, I mean uh, site review and the additional conditions so, subject uh, to the specific uh, variances as listed. presented by the re uh, revised plan in accordance with the uh, requested setbacks variances. Do you need to be specific uh, for HGC? You need to lay out specific waivers listed and site plan review. I second. All those in favor? Thank you. The first agenda item is South Coast Capital Investments, um, 209 Brighton Street, S1538 is the variance request change existing four unit mixed use building, three residential and one commercial, into a four residential unit dwelling waiving all requirements in a BL district, lot size 5,400 plus or minus square feet. Good evening for the record. My name is Jeff Tallman from SciTech Engineering, having a place of business at 449 Florence Corner Road in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Um, Quite simply, what the applicant is looking to do with this petition is is to simply convert the commercial unit that's currently in the uh, in the building at 209 Brightman Street into a residential unit. The area, since the construction and opening of the Veteran Memorial Bridge and the closure of the Brightman Street Bridge, really is no longer commercial uh, commercially viable, um, and he's having difficulty finding a tenant for that commercial unit. Um, you know, with the, there's been a drastic reduction in the amount of traffic that passes by this site. Um, there, you know, the, the area between Lindsay Street and McDonald Street is now one way heading east, so there's limited amount of traffic that, that now goes down Brightman Street. I know there's other businesses in the area that have uh, suffered as well. Uh, so quite simply, um, the petitioner is just looking to convert that commercial unit into a residential unit, which would be the fourth residential unit in the building. And there'd be no changes to the actual outside of the building? That's correct. Do any members of the board have questions? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Mr. Roth, do you have any comments? Um, just 
one question. 217 is still going to remain the it says existing bakery or former bakery as a commercial building? Yes. Okay. Um, at, at this present time, there's no real plans. Um, it, it's that building's totally gutted at the moment. Um, so we may be seeing you back <laughs> for a residential Quite possibly. Unit. Yes. Um, okay. Um, from a, a planning standpoint, now, there's no issues. I, I can't see, we don't see that the uh, that there would be an intensity of use going from a, a commercial unit to a residential unit, therefore we have no issues. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> Number two on the agenda is CSDC Facilities Corporation, care of Arthur D. Santos, 240 Dover Street, lot I-2331. It's a variance request to construct a two-story addition to the existing pool to provide additional classrooms and related educational space, waiving side yard setbacks and lot coverage requirements. It's also a special permit request to waive on-site parking requirements in an A2 district, lot size 58,000. 219 plus or minus Petitioners. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Roth, members of the board, my name is Arthur Diasenis. I'm an attorney in Fall River, 57 North Main Street is my address. Uh, representing CSDC Facilities Corporation, um, who is represented in turn by its CEO and by Rebecca Seacrest, as executive vice president. Um, we also have Sean Ainsworth, uh, who is the site engineer and who has submitted the plans that you're looking at. Uh, we have the architect here who has uh, some uh, visuals uh, he can put up on the board for you to take a look at after the, uh, uh, the site plan comes down. There um, is also here, uh, and I want to recognize Representative Silva, is here to support the petition. Um, we have Kristen Pavo, who is the executive director and the founder of uh, the Argus and Collegiate School. Uh, she has with her staff members from the school, she has with her the Parents Association representatives, and she has with her some students who will hopefully learn a little bit about democracy in action tonight. Um, we also have uh, Paul Burke, who is the chair of the Argosy Board, and we have its attorney, Arthur Frank, here as well. Um, Madam Chair, as you indicated, it's a, uh, it's a proposal for an extension. Uh, it's a two-story extension that will supply about 10 classrooms. Um, a, a gymnasium is the big piece of it. Uh, it doesn't have a gym yet. And it will allow the school to continue with its mission to provide a full high school experience to the charter school students. So a little bit about Argosy Charter School. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, Commonwealth Charter School. Um, it's been in the city for some time. The location is the former St. Peter and Paul School. So this has been a school since 1923, based on my research. Uh, it's been rehabbed entirely to make it more modern. The school is doing very well. They're licensed for an additional 74 students. This addition will allow them to bring in those students. Uh, it runs through grades beginning this school year, 9 through 11. This will allow the 12th grade to be available to those students who've been here all that time and then be able to graduate with that experience. Um, the, uh, the, the, the relief, uh, it, the building conforms, the use conforms, there are two minor issues. Um, the parking is really not so much of an issue. Uh, the parking is going to move primarily off-site. There's a lot across the street, and I think you have a parking plan as the third set uh, that Mr. Roth has. There is a rectory building on that property. That property will come into common ownership with the ownership of the school. And so we'll have control over that parking lot. Uh, the parking lot right now has 24 spaces. Uh, once the rectory that's on the building now is raised, uh, it will have, uh, what's the count, Sean? Mm -hmm. The count on the lot? Uh, 45. 45 total. So 47, on on, 38 on the lot and seven on the site. And that meets the requirement, the staff expectations between 40 and 45. So 45 is sufficient. Uh, the special permit process uh, is uh, in the ordinance to allow off-site. The ordinance requires on-site but permits off-site when you have a situation such as this. So the parking is uh, uh, is plentiful. There's about 45 spaces in the streets around the school. The school occupies an entire city block. Um, it's bounded by four streets. 
It has a big parking lot at the end, and that is where uh, the school uh, building is going to go. It will go up until, if you look at the topo lines on the map, it slopes steeply down to the rear, so the school goes out about as far as it, as it can go. Um, the variance request is modest. It's uh, three and a half feet. It's a 20-foot setback requirement. The request is that it be 16.5. It's necessitated by the existing structure, so the legal hardship is there is a structure. It's been there for 90 years. Uh, the center hall of that structure is going to be the center hall of the new school, and it is going to continue straight through, and on the left will be the classroom space, and on the right will be the gym, and that's the configuration for it. Uh, there's no room in the back, topographically the lot slopes. Uh, so there's a modest have, release. Sorry, explain a little bit about the shape, soil topography, as to how this would qualify for a hardship. Sure, so structures, structures qualify for a hardship. And the structure is situated in such a way it has a center hall. That center hall is the means of, of getting in and out of the school. It accesses all the classrooms. It accesses the office space. The, the addition will continue that center hall straight into the addition and will provide that access to the, the, the extra room and will provide access to the classrooms on one side and the gym space on the other. I th I, if I might, just a little bit, um, uh, if, if, with the board's indulgence, if I could have uh, Kristen Pavo speak a little bit about the school and, and, and what it does. That's fine. <coughs> Is it? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Kristen Pavo. I'm the founder and the executive director of Argosy Collegiate Charter School. I'm a native of Fall River, born and raised here. Um, and we, we started this work to uh, create a college preparatory tuition-free program for Fall River. Um, we, um, we have 10,000 scholars to educate in the city and prior to Argosy Collegiate there was not a program that was 100% dedicated um, to college preparation. Um, so just thinking about um, providing opportunities for our scholars uh, tuition free to have the kind of like a private school um, quality education college preparatory um, for 100 percent of our scholars um, our student population represents the student population of Fall River and such that uh, we have a higher percentage of students with disabilities a higher percentage of students who are English language learners um, and high need students um, so we're really um, reaching all scholars um, and giving them this opportunity um, I think it's important to say too that you know when we wrote the the charter for the school. We wanted to open our school um, on the south side of the city as both of the public school high school options were on the north side of the city. So providing a high school, a high quality high school public opportunity, public school opportunity for students on the south end of the city um, was our goal. Um, and we've been very, very fortunate to be able to occupy two um, closed and dilapidated former uh, schools. Our middle school is located in the former Wixon School, uh, which was a, a district school. Um, and it was uh, vacant for, I guess, about a decade, fully renovated that space, um, and then the neighborhood was uh, in support of, of the school, was in support of the school becoming a school again, um, and it's been a, just a, a fabulous experience um, in that neighborhood. We're very fortunate again, a few years later, when our inaugural scholars were ready to enter high school, to be able to, again, further occupy another vacant school, uh, the St. Peter and Paul School, which is a closed district, uh, excuse me, a closed um, Catholic school. Uh, we fully renovated that space, um, and our inaugural scholars have nowhere to go for 12th grade. So it's it's um, critically important that um, we're allowed this expansion so that those scholars can um, fulfill their, their program. We have an incredible partnership with Bristol Community College. All of our scholars are taking dual enrollment classes as early as um, ninth grade. Um, so far in just two years, our high school scholars in ninth and 10th grade have earned over 500 uh, tuition-free college credits. Um, and so our scholars, our mission and our vision has truly evolved into our high school graduates. Um, upon graduation from high school, we'll have up to a full year of college credits already completed. Um, so it's really a fantastic program and a very unique and innovative opportunity for our scholars. Um, having a, um, an MIAA um, size gymnasium helps us to um, provide our scholars an athletic program, a health and a wellness program. Um, and also to be able to develop a, um, a, a gymnasium and, an, and a, a program that we could even open up to the neighborhood and to um, folks on the south side of the city to use because there, there are no facilities on the south side of, of the city to, to run um, programs to uh, invite the public into. Thank you. You're welcome. Do any members of the board have questions? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? I'm going to start um, to the left of the room and then go across, ma'am, back. 
Franklin Regal, president of the Niagara Neighborhood Association, we formally really backed this thing up. They've done a fantastic job in the school that they have now. We've had no problem whatsoever with them. So I say, please, vote for it. Thank you. Hi, Alan Sylvia, State Representative, 7th Bristol District. I represent the area that uh, the Agassiz School is located, and of course, I'm here in uh, support of this variance. This is this enhances uh, the neighborhood quality education, school choice. You heard Kristen, everything uh, we could ask for. Education is a priority, not just for me, but for our entire community. And uh, this is uh, the ultimate. Uh, that we could ask for in education. So uh, it, uh, you see no opposition. Uh, I, don't, I don't know of any opposition. Perhaps there is, there is. Uh, but uh, the neighbors and the neighborhood association is uh, fully supportive of, uh, of this uh, of this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Smith, Executive Director of the United Way, and I'm also a parent of an Argosy scholar who has attended since sixth grade. Um, having been a Catholic educated individual my entire life. Charter school was new territory for me and I can say that has been an amazing experience through and through. I think every opportunity has been given to these children to uh, excel not only in their academics but also socially and emotionally and with each other giving back being good citizens. Um, so my daughter is now entering 10th grade and I'm hoping to see the school expand so she can complete her high school education. Thank you ma'am. In the middle, we'll start with the back row. Christian Velasco, teacher at Argus Included Charter School. Um, just wanted to say that the opportunities that we provide scholars um, is so critically important. and We've really, truly made an incredible impact on the community as well as the opportunity to be provided with our scholars. Um, so just in full support today of the expansion, which will continue to provide um, just endless opportunities for the students in Florida. Uh, Joshua Renell, also teacher at Argus Included Charter High School. <coughs> Uh, really excited to grow our program. Uh, we have just been so focused on academics and the whole the whole high school experience, really getting scholars ready for college. And I think building a space where we can, you know, design. I think if you walk into the building today, our high school looks like you're in a college space. And I think furthering that that vision is is really exciting opportunity. And having that MIA gym, um, not only for our scholars and hopefully to bring them to the community, is is really just a, a great opportunity for these kids. My name is Cheryl Scar. I am the Dean at High School. Um, not every scholar succeeds at every traditional high school. Schools like this are needed across the United States, not just in Florida. That is the importance. This helps to counter the dropout rate in America in Fall River. It not only does that, but it we prepare our scholars for life. We give our scholars life skills that are necessary in every day, not only to go to college. So I implore you to say yes, to give all of our scholars and the youth of Fall River a better chance. Thank you. Sir? <coughs> Sunil Jagna, the director of Toon Sport at the school. Uh, just here tonight to uh, put my full support behind the expansion. Uh, can't speak highly enough about, I, I've been in education now for close to 15 years, I uh, can't speak highly enough about the mission in the, in the school and the <coughs> passion that Kristen has for the school and uh, the vision of the school. Uh, we have scholars here tonight that are in support of the program, uh, that are continuing and about to fulfill, um, stepping into that next journey of life and next phase of life and stepping into college. And, um, so as we, as we, as they approach that, that time, we want to be able to provide them with a full high school experience. Um, and the gym, the additional bathroom space would, would do that. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Michelle Carney. I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction at Argosy, and I stand in full support also of the expansion as it serves such an important part of fulfilling the mission and vision of our scholars experiencing that full high school um, experience and that full uh, experience includes that gym and so just really how important it is that we can contribute to um, college readiness here in Fall River this way. Thank you. Uh, next room. Good evening, I'm Anthony Bronco, the principal at Argosy High School and uh, I have 20 years experience in education in local school systems that were non-charter and I can tell you that only when I came to Argosy did I finally see um, such a dedicated staff 
that really cares about the students. And um, our scholars are, they benefit from not only the caring staff, but such a hard working staff. Um, our staff, I've never seen teachers work 10, 12 hours by choice. And, and that's what happens at Argosy. Um, we have, you know, our, our, we're different because we have staff that have cell phones on them because our students know that they can call their teachers until seven o'clock at night if they have a question on the homework. And I've never seen that before in my in, entire experience. Um, our scholars are counting on us to build a gym because um, right now they do not have one. And in order to continue building our program and to support our inaugural, inaugural scholars that were with us since sixth grade, um, this, is, this is what they really need, is, is a gym and an extra space so that we can keep them for 12th grade and see them off to college and be successful. I'm also a Fall River native. My name is Monica Filgo and I'm the new middle school principal at Argosy and I'm here in full support and I really believe in the school and the mission and vision. Um, I just want to highlight that this experience of having that high school gym would really create that full, rich, college-like experience and that preparation that our scholars need going from 6th to 12th and really highlight the investment that we have for our scholars from that um, grade 6 to 12. So, <clears throat> Thank you. Sir? Thank you, Madam Chairman. My name is Paul Burke. I'm Chairman of the Board of Trustees and representing our full board of trustees, which is a volunteer group of 15 members of the community. Uh, we've worked very hard at bringing the school to where it is today, along with the staff and the students that have come here. And this is our last step to put a full high school uh, program together for them. But it's not only that, if we transform the neighborhood from a blighted section uh, to a vibrant school with young people and education there, and we want to be good neighbors. So if we're not looking to really change worse we want to make it better and this this really makes it better for the neighborhood and for our scholars so it's not just about the scholars it's for the whole neighborhood and we appreciate your support for this thank you attorney frank Green. just going to say one thing thank you this board has a very unique opportunity to allow what has been a very treasured piece of fall river's past to continue on as an educational center. All too often, this board is asked to raise a building and go in a different direction. So I think it's admirable that this group, this group of people, not only have invested their time uh, and some of their treasure and talent and want this school to continue on uh, in the traditions of the schools that have been in Fall River for the last 200 years. Thank you. We'll move to the right of the room. Um, in the back, is there anybody here in favor of this petition? All right, if you could please stand, say your name, your address, and why you're in favor of the petition, please. Tracy <laughs> Gondels, um, I actually I work at the school. Um, and everything that everyone said is, is on point. The kids need a gym. I'm Paul so I'm a grandmother of Plymouth Scholars. And they should have a gym, so for them health-wise, and keep them going. Thank you, sir. John Fatale. Uh My girlfriend's this issue works for the school, and uh, I also have a daughter that's going to be attending <coughs> their middle school this year. Um, so a school with a gym would, you know, benefit with her. She, she likes sports. She does a lot of activities. So I'm in support for them having a gym as well. Thank you. <coughs> Next. Um, I'm Amy Almeida. I'm a scholar at the school. I've been there since sixth grade, and I think it's really important that we have the gym and are able to expand our horizons. I've been provided so many new opportunities that have kickstarted my future, that I'm not even there yet, but I already have college credits backed up, and I'm really excited to finish out my high school education and even kickstart my college and my career with that. And that's my most important that we need to Thank you. Um, my name is Kaylee Zerfone, and I'm a scholar at Argosy. I'd like to help if we have any buildings that can finish high school. Next row, please. My name is Dawn Pittman. 
I live in Fall River. Both of my children go to RDC Middle and High School. Um, last year was our first year there, and to see my children change their minds from sticking to what they know or what I taught them to be in life, that they could be anything to actually tangible, I want to be a lawyer, a doctor, a veterinarian, or whatever, the conversations that we have, I, I can't find anywhere else in the city but at Argus. My children have gained a family. I feel like I've gained a family. We have um, an FTO, not a PTO, because their motto is it's family-oriented, not just parent-oriented. So it doesn't matter what your family makeup is. If you're a single parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're a friend, and you're a foster parent, and you're raising somebody, we can be involved in the school. And that's not something I've always experienced here in Fall River as a parent. It's been very closed off, so it's a nice change. And I would very much like for my children to continue with the Argosy family and be able to graduate. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eleanor Almeida. I'm a Fall River native, um, and I raised my daughter, and she's been with the school since um, sixth grade. I also have my youngest daughter will be starting in the fall. Um, I totally um, support the mission and vision of the school, and to echo um, Dawn's comments, it is a family, and it's been amazing to see the support that's been afforded to our scholars, and to watch them flourish, and really actually be excited about school, and really wanting that high school experience. The, some sports or just other other things that kids in high school get to do. Um, so I'm really totally in support of, of having a gym. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Kristen Patiska. I'm married into generations in Fall River. Um, I'm coming in as a 25 year educator, 12 years as a mom, and at the FTO with these beautiful women. This school is amazing. My child had the opportunity to come to Cape to school with me, but I chose to come back to Fall River so she can be part of her community. And this school has really embraced that and brought that. And I think we can give back to the community. As an FTO, we've already been thinking about what do we do with the vacant parking lot when there's no cars. We can have fall festivities, just great things, and bring in the community for the gymnasium. I think it just brings more to Fall River. And I'd love to see Fall River keep going and become what it is. Thank you. Next row. Uh, my name is Al Dubin. I'm my associate with Rebecca Seacrest. We're with Charter School Development. So we're not from the community. We help uh, charters, public charter schools throughout the country. And uh, when we go and we visit a school who's looking to, you know, for some help from us, we get to know the school and the community pretty well. Uh, from what we've seen, this uh, expansion of the school is really going to be a benefit not just to the community, but you're going to have several hundred children that are going to benefit from the improvements that are being made here. And when we look at what uh, we're doing for charter schools, we really look at what the benefits of the children are more than anything else. And you know, we don't take on every single project that comes to us. We take on the ones that we think has a good board of directors, uh, the right kind of commitment to the children, the staff that's really accommodating, and the fact that they're a good neighbor. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay, ma'am, we'll start with you. Jody Burst here, 37 Benton Street. I live right across from the um, church school. Uh, it used to be St. Peter and Paul. And I hear everybody saying how wonderful charter school is, and that's great. But we also have Durfee, Diamond. There's great schools. My son right now is serving in Iraq for all of you. He's serving this year graduate of Dur Dur Durfee. I haven't seen him for over a year. And I uh, got my other son. He gra just graduated for, uh, with Ms. Uh, Associates out of Springfield. So this other, I don't knock your school. It's great, it's great school. But you guys are bad neighbors. You've been really rude with your building. It has been a horrible experience. St. Peter and Paul was beautiful. You guys have been nasty. The parking lot is not empty. Opposed to what you guys say, like we can do better. When it was St. Peter and Paul, they did fairs and stuff off season. Now it's just slaughtered with cars with no plates, no front plate, no back plate. They're Rhode Island people. How many are Rhode Island teachers here? Over in here, yeah. You know, everybody's getting paid in Rhode Island. It's nasty. I got a house across the street, and I do not want another two-story building to block my only view. And then you're gonna load me up with more friggin' parking issues and rude building. They've been the rudest people I've ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. I am sorry. I love the school. Education means the world to me. Both my kids are educated. They're serving for you. 
and don't you ever forget it. My kids in Afghanistan fighting for all of you. All right? And I've been a decent neighbor. I can't say great because you know what? I haven't been happy with you guys. Other than that, my property, and I got pictures of it, beautiful, clean. I got my friggin' the Jay's little signs up. My, my property is cut along with other members here of Fenton Street. Care of it, it, we got beautiful property. So for them to say that, like, is it a betterment? It's not an betterment, it's an impediment. They've been nothing but rude, and I, I, I oppose it. I don't want a two-story structure going up in my only view. I bought a house there to raise my family and my grandkids. I put up a pool. I put up brim fences. I planted rose bushes. I'm out there every day pushing the mower, and I own two lots by myself. I take care of it. I sweep the street, and I used to friggin' uh, snow plow the thing for the, the um, walkway for St. Peter and Paul. I'll do anything for the schools. I believe in education, but I'm sorry. Thank but you. people that are Rhode Island residents sucking our tax dollars, making our money, and they're gonna ruin my neighborhood. It's not an impediment, it's a ruining, and that's, I'm sorry, that's the best I know how to speak. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Thank you. I feel the same. If you could there. please stand and identify yourself in your I address. Can't, I can't stand. Oh. Well, I can't. Could you just oh, I identify and yourself? I have a, this she doesn't have to stand. She doesn't have to stand. If you could just <laughs> okay. identify yourself and your address, please. All right. I'm um, uh, Trisha Franker. I live on the first floor on Benton Street. Um, I also have a handicapped husband who can't really go out. I can't go places. That's all I've got is that view. I sit on my front porch. I might as well move across from that street. If you're going to put another two-story building right in front of my house, I might as well move to New Bedford and live across from the jail. That's all I can say. And as far as the grounds go, we keep our grounds better than the school keeps their grounds. There are weeds this high out across the street. That St. Peter and Paul's were out there every week cutting that grass, doing everything to keep it decent. All they did was cut down the trees and the hell with the rest. And that's the way I feel. I'm, I'm stuck. And there's nowhere for me to go because I have a handicapped husband and I'm also handicapped. If you don't believe me, take a ride by the house. There's a ramp out there. That's all we got is the yard. And to block that view, it's not fair. It isn't fair. And, I, and like I said, I, I'm for Argosy schools. I'm for all schools. I didn't go to Argosy school. But I bettered myself. I didn't have to go to Augusty. I went to regular school, graduated, went to nursing school, did my career, now I'm retired. What can I say? And that, that's all I got to say. Thank you, ma'am. Just please don't do it. Sorry to allow it. Yeah. James Levesque, 289 Manchester Street. I'm a direct butter to the property, and I may look familiar to you all because I was here three months ago. And three months ago, the um, is it called Elwood or some name, let me try and find it in here, came before the board, Sherwood, Sherwood Education, LLC, to divide the property at 250 Snell Street. I came to the board and I says, how is this going to impact the larger program at Argosy and their expansion? And no one could have an answer, except the lawyer who represented them at the time said, they're going to build a gym on the parking lot where the old church was on the corner of Dover and Snell Street. And I asked the city planner, what could we possibly do? What's, how, what is the, what's gonna happen to our neighborhood? How can we do it? And the city planner said, well first, nobody knew what, that there was any expansion going on, although it was all over their website, saying they were putting a 25,000 foot, $2 million expansion, sounds like a pretty ugly building to me, right you know, somewhere in there with the gym and stuff. The lawyer said they were putting the gym on the property on Dover Street and Snell Street. The board, the city planner said he didn't really know about the school, but he said, yes, I remember they're gonna put something out back. But you said, schools and churches can do whatever they want. And so the board took that information and said, and approved it because we thought we had nowhere to go, no plan to go. The school doesn't own the property, does it? Does the school own the property? Sir, There's not a school. you direct the comments to the chair. This, the school doesn't own, does the school own the property? We don't know who the corporation is, who owns the property. This is wonderful information about the school. 
that's great. It's a, no one is against the school. But the things that are saying, this is not about the school. These people don't own the property. They don't live there. They, they have family from Fall River. They grew up in Fall River. They knew this, they knew that, they knew that. I've lived there for 55 years. My windows, my, all my bedrooms in my house that I own, directly face that little strip of land that where the gym is going to be placed in this prime this thing over here. Today, both parking lots behind the school and the one they're talking about for parking were full. School isn't even started. The school isn't even at full capacity yet. They're going to have 350 students, another 50 people for a thing. The freshmen and sophomore don't drive, but the juniors and seniors may drive. Where are they going to put the buses? If you put those six townhouses in there, I mean, you voted on those townhouses not knowing the full facts. That should be investigated, and that, that should be vacated. And that property, they have the full amount of property to build anything they want, but they came into seat and contempt of this board months ago and said, oh, we're going to build this that has nothing to do with the school. They had the land and they gave it away. Or perhaps it could be something that could be done about it. But that, it isn't right. It isn't what happened. That is just not what's going on. I mean, it was false. The information was going. So I'm going to keep going, hopefully. Sorry for it. It's very upsetting for people who are lives are literally separate. Benton is an extremely small street. My neighbor didn't get a notice from the zoning board saying they were doing this. His driveway exits right across from the driveway. The trucks are there at 6 in the morning, backing up, beep, 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 to the thing. When they did construction the last time, wonderful construction, total construction, they were there at 6 in the morning till 9 at night. They tried to have a wedding on a Sunday in their, in their yard, and they wouldn't stop for them. The noise was so ridiculous. My bedroom's right outside that window. They're not good neighbors. Helen, how many people attend your meetings right now? Sir, please. Sorry, she says she represents the neighborhood association. I'm told two to three people attend. And if it's three, it's because the policeman gives a crime report. Okay, they do not represent us. They're not representing what the situation is. They're not good neighbors. They don't cut the grass. They don't pick up the trash. They had a blinking light that we asked about to stop, like a strobe light, for eight months going. That we couldn't even sit outside at night because it was so bright and so, you know, it was just, it's ridiculous. They're not, this isn't about a school. This is about the zoning committee. And you, they lied to you. They had the property to build what they wanted to build and they deceitfully shoveled it in and, and, and hoodwinked you. You know, at least this is, the attorney that was here last time said, this neighborhood is used to eight unit buildings. Our neighborhood is both single, two and three family dwellings, owner occupied. It's not a blighted neighborhood. It's not dilapidated. People have lived there forever. But like, just like our neighbor said, why would we live there now, okay? This is, has anyone from the school ever come out to us and said anything, made any outreach? Invite us to the gym. I don't know any of these people. I live right there, I see them. You know, no one has ever made any effort for an open house or where are the plans telling us where are the bus is gonna go? Where are the students gonna park? Where are the cafeteria people gonna work? Where, you know, why is this such a, a secret? And then, the school is wonderful. We can all agree on that. But this project is not. Right under my window, a gym, they had the opportunity to build a gym on the parking lot. Right now, for a gym, they go to Pulaski Park. Across from Pulaski Park, they're selling Holy Cross property. They could build whatever they want over there. They could build whatever they want on the places where the six townhouses are going. They cannot destroy our neighborhood. They don't own the place. In a couple of years, just like Atlantis did, they're gonna, they can combine their schools together and build somewhere else. And what are we going to be left with? An ugly hulk in the middle of a neighborhood, a non-conforming structure, changing our lives, and they're going to move on. You know, these, even if they're here, they're only here for four years. It's just not, it's just, uh, you know, it's, I can't believe this. You know, the, people don't even know about it because they don't understand what's going on. It's not a hardship. Charter schools, by regulation in Massachusetts, have to prove they're fiscally sustainable. And they also have to prove they're non-profit. Okay, so there's no hardship involved in this what's going on here. If you take this up, you'll ignore the fact that you were lied to and deceived to just a few months ago, and you'll, you'll come up with a plan. Sit down with us. Don't just throw this monster at us. Put the gym on the corner where you said you were going to put it. Don't put it under my window. The street is so narrow, and cars park on both sides, they can't even get the dump truck out. They have to like maneuver, 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 back up the street, beep, 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 all morning long. What are they going to do with construction? There, there was such a bad record of construction when they did this. It's, 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 a, it's deplorable, and I beg you to not let this travesty go any further. The school can do, I wish them the best success in the world, but it's not the school, it's the neighborhood. They say on their thing, they're laser focused, they are definitely laser focused on themselves. They have no outreach, the school is a mess. And I have pictures too of the, you know, the stone wall fell down about the school. It just lay there for months and months and months. Were they having a zoning meeting, a committee meeting? Oh, they cut the grass and they put the stone wall back together again. But for the rest of the time, it's not touched, it's left there. We're not a, we're, we're, we're a community, we're people who own our occupied dwellings who live in this neighborhood forever. 
this is not something that should be shoved down our throats because people who are obviously politically affiliated can come up and say things. We're the people. We're not a corporation. Corporations aren't people. We're the people. Please stand for us and say something on our behalf. Thank you. Would you like to respond to any of the questions? Excuse me, they I'm might be more. Not sure what it is. I'm uh, sorry. Are there? Is there anybody else opposed to this petition, sir? Would you please stand. <coughs> state your name and address. So my name is Jonathan Towers. Just bought the property about a year ago, and uh, I actually own two lots. It extends all the way to Benton Street. Um, I am all in favor of the school. And from what I've hear, heard today, it sounds like an amazing place. It sounds like they've done a great job with what they have so far. Um, and you know, if adding a gym is something that absolutely has to happen for the education of the children, I mean, Sophia, education is the most important thing. However, I do agree with my neighbors here that building on this piece of property is just not a good idea. I, just, I can't physically see how it's going to operate and function with traffic driving by, um, increase of people at the school that will be working there, with the children. I mean, as it is right now, there's, there's no parking. Um, no parking at all. So by expanding this and creating more people here, I think it's being an issue. Um, as far as upkeep of the property goes, I will say that is probably the one negative uh, about the school that I have experienced myself as well. Um, people walk their dogs by there and there's poop all over the sidewalk, things like that. Nobody goes out, cleans it up. The weeds are out of control. The rocks are falling down everywhere. Uh, the bump truck several times has had issues where it's bumped and there's the trash on the road. I've gone out and cleaned it up myself. Um, I have a lot of kids. I don't think they're from the school, but there are a lot of kids in the area that kind of walk through that way and when they come through that way, they, they run through my yard as well. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I, I am opposed to making the building in that location behind the school. What happens on the other side, like my neighbor Peter was saying, I mean, I think that's a great spot for a, a lot to be built there. There's tons of space, there's lots of area. If it could be built over there, that'd be great. But to build it directly behind the school, I just don't think it's a good idea. So. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here opposed to this petition? Thank you. Um, Jeff, can, can we respond? To um, I'm going to give your attorney an opportunity to respond. Well, there, uh, the, the complaints appear to be um, uh, with respect to the neighborhood and clutter. Um, I'm trying to parse out what, what some of the objections are. Um, looking at the map, um, um, and, and I assume it's correct. Uh, we had insight to the work, but uh, nearly all the, there's one single family in the neighborhood. So in terms of the, the character of the neighborhood, uh, there are many three families, and there's two six families that are shown on the map. We can't hear you over here. Yeah, the, the, uh, the height of the building, which is part of the concern, is permitted in the district. We're not asking for a waiver on height. We're asking for a waiver on the, the waiver that that matters. I think is the the setback, and it's a it's a three and a half foot waiver that would put the building further away from the street than most of the other properties in the neighborhood. The hardship relates to the building and it relates to the topography. I'm not sure about the earlier hearing that the neighbor referred to. I wasn't here. It's on the uh, uh, the owner of the this property owns property across the street. I'm told that he came for a variance to subdivide the lot across the street, which contains the rectory building. Uh, when that rectory is raised, that is creating the extra parking for this school. So I'm not really sure I understand uh, the, the allegation of deceit. I wasn't here and I wasn't you said involved. The rectory was going to be raised. So please let me sir, finish. Sir. You've had your All right. Thank you. Excuse me, both of you, gentlemen. Direct your comments to the board only. And so the uh, the subdivision was approved by the board. I wasn't here. I wasn't part of it. You know better than I do what was said at the subdivision. The owner of the property is the owner of this property. He has the property under agreement with my client for my client to purchase it. And Argosy has a long-term lease for the use of the property. They're there. They have all the legal rights to be there. Um, beyond that, I'm not sure, other than the uh, complaints about the school. They like the school, but they're not good neighbors. I would leave that to Mr. Burke, who I think wanted to address some of that, if, if you I may. believe we've already heard input from people in favor and people opposed. At this point, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Roth if you have any input. I would start with the variance portion of this request. Um, 
<clears throat> Obviously, this is an educational uh, use. Under the Dolan Amendment, you can't unreasonably regulate it. Um, so it's not a, um, a factor of uh, whether the, the use is allowed or not, because you can't un unre unreasonably regulate the use. Um, should the board, I, I know that I, we've sat down with the applicant and the city engineer to discuss a lot of different things. Parking was the biggest concern and came to the conclusion and um, got them to look at uh, on the parcel number one, which is just to the, um, it's to the north, um, to look at um, part of a condition would be that that before they started any construction that that would have to be raised and the construction of that parking lot to look at providing the uh, additional parking uh, needed for the site should the board find that it meets the criteria for the variance um, the we would request um, that site plan review be required and that a condition that the um, rectory building be demoed prior uh, to issuance of a building permit on this. We feel that it's key to uh, uh, have the building demoed and the, and the parking lot also established. Um, uh, the building demo prior and the parking lot established with this development. So. Thank you, give me time to sell my house because I can't stay there. All right, do any members of the board have questions? We can approve that even though this is not part of the petition. I see 2331. This is not on that. You can't. Okay. Because they've made it part of the application. Okay, they did put it on. That's what I'm saying. It's not on here. Right. Yeah. And you can specifically require a condition that the that the parking lot be installed prior to that the building be demoed and that the parking lot be um, constructed. Uh, I see. I mean, I get it. I prior to issuance of a, a final occupancy. The post down. That's why. So we yeah. interested in the mm -hmm. So we just use the park as a parking for teachers, additional teachers for the, for the high school, or it's for the high school. So they can ask students as well? Yes. Uh, so the parking requirement is based on one space per staff. Staff is estimated between 40 and 45. Um, 45 spaces being supplied just to be able to meet the outside limit of what they expect to do. And that's the total number of spaces? Yes. Have yes. How many students do you have? 320, I think, or 330. 344 at full enrollment. So we've got 150, 11, 12 graders. And we serve in a, a high poverty community, so many of our scholars are not going to have cars. That's a lot. They're not they, they they going to be allowed to bring cars. To they will be allowed to bring cars. Yeah. They, but they, but the, they pop them all off the street without plates, without stickers. And I got a ticket because I bought a brand new car, left it out there 24 hours, and got a ticket. Do not direct questions to audience members. So at this point, do, are there any other questions for members of the board? If you could continue. Any other questions? At this point, I'm asking the board to consider the variance request. Is there a motion? I vote to grant the position with the site plan review the conditions of the additional parking to be added to that second parcel prior to construction or any building to be done on parcel two. The state was that the building needs to be demoed prior to start of construction and the parking lot needs to be, needs to be constructed prior, uh, prior to issuance of an, of an occupancy permit. Okay. And the dimensions is according to what's on the plans? Yes. For them. Is there a second for that? All those in favor? That would be granted. At this point, we'll now address the special permit part of the uh, petition. Do you have anything else to add under the special permit? No, ma'am. Okay. So, 
that would be under section 86-445. Uh, the board, that section indicates that any parking or loading requirements set forth herein may be reduced or modified upon the issuance of a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals if the board finds that the reduction or modification is not inconsistent with public health and safety or that the reduction or modification promotes a public benefit. So, if we're moving under the special permit, that would be for to modify the on-site parking requirements. Um, is there a motion under the special permit? So moved. Is there a second? Just point of clarification. What are, how are we modifying the can't be outside? Oh, oh, the back there. Oh, can you talk so, Yeah. Okay, I'll second. Okay. Those in favor. We're going to take a five minute recess. If all those parties could exit the room with the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, August 15th, 2019. We will proceed with agenda item number three. Is this a new government? No. Yeah. BCBBK LLC, care of um, attorney Arthur DeAsantis, 697 and 713 Deval Street, lot 022678. It's a special permit request to combine map 022, lot 678, to construct a six story mixed use building with commercial use on the first floor and residential use on the remaining floors. 14 one bedroom and 35 two bedroom market rate apartments, providing 62 parking spaces waiving requirements in a commercial mill district and um, HD overlay yeah, district. Combined lot size one, is uh, one two. plus or minus acre. The petitioner is wrong. Petitioner could begin. It's right here. He has a change that needs to be made. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, for the record, Arthur D. Asenis, uh, 57 North Main Street, Fuller of Mass, uh, representing uh, the applicant and the owner of the property, uh, BCBBK LLC. BCBBK LLC is a limited liability company and his two members are Robert Karam, and he is here in the room, and Bacos Bank, and is represented by its uh, executive vice president and uh, COO, uh, Jim Wallace, and he is here as well. Uh, also. Uh, we have the project engineer, uh, Rich Ram, who uh, is uh, the chief engineer and owner and operator of Prime Engineering. Um, and we have a ZDS architect represented by Eric Swinner and Julie Bartlett in there here as well. Uh, may I have a, a moment, Madam Chair, just to confer on yes, the uh, on petition? Yes, Come back. In, in, in our petition, we, you know, in the actual application, we said to be fine, two bedroom and 14 one bedroom. And it's just the three first. 35 one bedroom, 14 two bedroom. So it should be 35 one and 14 two. Yeah. Just as screwed as ever. Yeah. 35 and 14. Yeah, so that's how you had it. 35 two bedroom, 14 one, one bedroom. That should be split. 35 one. You should be 35 yeah, one and 14 two. Less parking. Oh, the newspaper had something. Oh, twice less parking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Madam Chair, but the, thank you for the for the moment to confer. Um, the uh, petition, as submitted, uh, contains a Scribner's error, which actually uh, works to, I think, the favor of the project. Um, as you read it, uh, it uh, described 35 two bedroom and 14 one bedroom, and that's actually flipped. It's 35 one bedroom and 14 two bedroom, which should be of interest, I would think, to the board. The density of the, the use would, would correspondingly diminish with uh, more one bedroom and two bedroom units. Does it need to be re advertised? Um, 
I would respectfully submit that, that we could proceed because it is it is a lesser uh, it's lesser included within in that and it's less burdensome for the site. So uh, I, my concern is that it has been advertised the opposite. So to be legal, uh, Mr. Roth, have any comments? I'm not an attorney, Mr. Deuson. This is an attorney, and you're an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I run the advertisements and I use what was in the application. So yes, you did. You did. The, the, the error was ours. Absolutely. Yes. Operate. Yes. What I'm suggesting is that we could proceed with that and then make an oral modification that is uh, less of a request for a waiver than that that's been permitted. It's a lesser density. The lesser yeah. density. Yeah, it's a lesser density. If I may speak, Richard, on prime engineering, the, the zoning code talks about residential units. It doesn't differentiate the required parking on whether it's one, two, three, or four. It just says per per residential unit there shall be two. So the required amount of parking and our proposed amount of parking is, is the same. It's it's just a, a detail, it's not a relevant not relevant to the zoning code. No, I understand, but it was advertised a certain way and that's not what the petition is going forward as. So I think we'd be prepared to proceed as advertised, but we would consider an amendment if, if uh, uh, required by the board that the bedroom count be switched so there there be more one bedrooms than there are two bedrooms. They could proceed at their own error. They could proceed at their own error and a risk that it get appealed um, on a technicality. That would be yes. something that you would have to decide. I'm wondering why I get in the water. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of them around, Bob. <laughs> I, 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 have, I don't want to wait. So there we are. Go we'll forward. proceed. We're going to have to appeal. We have to appeal. Yeah. May we proceed? You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so the proposal is for a six-story building uh, for 49 uh, residential units. Uh, the first floor will be a uh, tellerless bank, a small uh, bank office, and the rest of the first floor will be devoted to uh, supportive facilities for the 49 units. Um, the, uh, the building meets uh, code. We're not asking for any waivers on bulk or dimensions. We're not asking for any waivers with respect to setbacks. Um, there are two special permits that are requested and only two. Um, and the first is somewhat of an anomaly because in the uh, HD district, the uh, Housing Development Overlay District, uh, the underlying district only permits single family residences, but the HD district drives towards uh, multi-unit uh, buildings, 80% of which have to qualify for market rents. And that's a process that involves the city and involves the state and that's this project. This project proposes to make available on Duval Street uh, with a $12 million investment, 49 units, 80% of which are going to be market rent, and those rents are set higher than the average rents in the city of Fall River. Uh, that's part of what's exciting about this project. The remaining uh, units, the nine remaining units, uh, will be workforce housing. Those rents are determined by looking at the standard metropolitan statistical area that Fall River is a part of, and Fall River is a part of the Providence, Warwick, Fall River, SMSA. So the average rents are going to be higher even for the workforce units, and they'll be somewhat higher as well for the, uh, 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 for the, for the other units. Uh, it's a process that requires local approval, it requires state approval. Uh, the developers are very confident that this uh, will get approval. Uh, it's available to Fall River because Fall River has been designated as a gateway community. And as a gateway community, you can set up uh, HD zones uh, that then allow private investment in the city uh, for uh, projects uh, that are meant to attract uh, uh, people who might otherwise be looking at Providence or Boston. And that's what this project we think will do. Uh, the, the banking facility on the first floor, uh, the new banks are, are tellerless banks. The notion is that you remove the barriers between the customers uh, and, and the bankers, that there are kiosks. And you probably have all been in there to the extent any of you ever go to banks anymore. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> um, but the, the banks are, uh, uh, it, it will be staffed between four and six people. Uh, so uh, the special permit for uh, 20 or more units is what's contemplated uh, both uh, in the underlying district 
uh, it, perhaps it should have been changed if you're creating an HD district where you want to have more units, uh, but that's uh, that request. Uh, other than that, the, the dimensional and bulk requirements will, will meet the zoning code. Uh, the parking uh, is, uh, uh, is, does not meet the code for parking. Uh, the parking proposed is 62 spaces. If you look at the code based on occupancy and using the formula that the, the table suggests, 108 spaces are required. There simply isn't sufficient land for that. Um, before I get into the details, I think I'd ask Rich Rayum to talk about the property characteristics. Uh, right. What I've shown here is the, the exhibit of, on the sheet we submitted, and this is the shape of the parcel. It's a very odd-shaped parcel. It has the elevated rail uh, to the east, Turner Street to the south, uh, DeVault Street to the uh, west, and right on the property line is, is another building, another building on this property line. There's quite an elevation difference in here, so there's some uh, even though it looks like a flat lot in this section, there's a, there's a very high elevation in here. So we have an unusual shape and an unusual topography. Um, and the proposal, let me just like buy a share. site plan which is also submitted to you the the railroad is again to the to the east um, the proposal is first floor building I call it in in light brown here the second story would be that light brown but also extend over here so this area in here has the upper floors above and the, the bank uh, drive-through would be coming in here and driving here for an ATM also driving in here uh, for, for a second um, a dispenser and then a bypass lane. Uh, this is the area that would be the actual bank office and everything to the north of that, all of this is support for the residential units. So this is the only small retail portion on the store. So, so we have a parking area, double loaded parking in here with handicapped spaces. There's single loaded in here and then we have uh, double loaded in, in this area. So this would be an exit and entrance onto Turner Street, and it would be an exit only onto the wall. And the, gra the green I've shown in here is the, the landscaping that, that comes. That's pretty much the essence of the site plan. And that's a drive up window or a drive up station. There, uh, in both lanes on the work inside the building, we're going to be putting two ITMs. On, on the interactive, interactive tele machines, so they're staffed by uh, staff. They're staffed by uh, individuals that are in our swampy offices. So those are staffed. Oh yeah. Seven in the morning to seven at night, but the staffing for those individuals is back in swamp. We run them now all over the place, and, and the staffing is one location. So we can Increase the hours that we're just that they can they can talk to the fellow. I had one other thing oh, on the on the uh, site plan, just the other side of the railroad tracks. There's a lot of on-street parking. This is unmetered parking. Uh, we've gone by there repeated times. Went back in time on aerial photos, and we've never seen a car parked there. So the 17 unmetered parking spaces that would be available. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the architects might want to talk about yeah, building a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Eric Zwina, a managing principal of ZDS Architecture and Interiors, a firm in Providence, Rhode Island, in Washington, D.C. Um, we're, we're happy to be a part of the project. I mean, just to take a step back, this is certainly a, a part of a, a bigger context. This project is sort of the beginning of what we expect to be telling a, a really big story for Fall River. Um, you know, Fall River, I think it was mentioned earlier, being a gateway a gateway community, we consider this somewhat of a gateway project. Uh, so we're really taking very seriously the opportunity we have as architects and designers to do the right thing here on the corner of DeWall and Turner. Um, before I talk about the details of the finishes, you know, the, 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 we're, we're sort of, we're being forward thinking in a lot of ways, you know, not just with an ITM uh, to talk about the, the, the progression of banking, 
uh, but also to talk about the progression of how people live in, in communities. And you know, we're really excited about all the master planning that's been done uh, for Duval Street. We're excited about the um, highway being lowered. Um, we're excited about the views that are created. And uh, we certainly took some time to think about what are some of the amenities of this building that would be important to the people who live here. Uh, and the, 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 the list was, was really important to us to identify not only to uh, design to meet those expectations, but also uh, to be thinking a little, bit, a little bit ahead of our competition as we move forward into this multi-unit um, project. Uh, the, the key amenities that we thought were critical were uh, bike storage. We thought that was really important for our, for our inhabitants. Uh, we're really thrilled that we have a, a bank on the first floor to help with maybe a younger community who's thinking about financial planning or wealth management and, and using this bank as an opportunity not just to go in and deposit a check or extract money because those days are over but to also be thinking about this bank as a place to, for people to grow and to have an amenity in their building that they could utilize uh, from a financial aspect. Uh, fitness was also something that was important this, this these expectations, this wish list of items. Uh, we found a beautiful spot on the first floor for that. And community living, um, you know, as apartments, and apartments sometimes get smaller in many urban areas, not that this is such a densely urban area, but we thought that a community space that was up on one of the higher floors that had a view over to the water was important, and that's something you see in the rendering happening right up here. And it was refreshing to have the ownership support to not get to stick as many units as we possibly could in this building, but instead to develop a project that we all were really satisfied with and thought would be special. And so we think we've accomplished that. The, the, the bank also, the, the forward thinking and the technology that we are embracing here at the bank also allows us to push this drive through off of the intersection, which makes for the whole site just to be a little bit safer with vehicular traffic and pedestrians. It also allows us to have this beautiful front green corner that really announces this project um, um, and, and again, access somewhat of a gateway, uh, all while you know, really embracing the railroad and what's happening uh, in, in the near future, we hope, uh, for that would be an additional amenity that might even reduce the need for a vehicle even less. Um, so with all that said, we, we really didn't think that the reduction of parking was, um, was going to be a problem. In fact, we were sort of celebrating the fact that we didn't need it. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, as you all know, this is a market decision to have less parking. You know, it's up to the owners um, to, to really rent these units. Uh, with less parking, but we think that we'll have no problem doing so. Uh, we're really excited about the project. I certainly can talk about finishes really quickly. We're talking about a beautiful porcelain, ba uh, porcelain uh, stone base. We have beautiful metal panels that are marching up the building in key areas. Uh, the, this is a combination of cementitious products that are happening on the, in the majority of the building's facade. Uh, and lighting is something that we're really uh, excited about here. Uh, again, just to uh, really uh, mark this residence as a, a destination for future inhabitants. Uh, and if you have more questions about materiality, I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, 49 units, uh, 35 one bedroom, 14 two bedroom. Um, and uh, you know, we think we have the right mix and, and we're really excited about how things are coming together. So uh, we're here to answer any questions you might have. I have, I have some additional data uh, from the census and an assessment that was done specifically in, in Fall River, um, showing the, the number of vehicles owned by uh, people uh, in, in rental units in Fall River. Um, and the first table shows that 26% <clears throat> of the renters in Fall River have zero vehicles, 52% have one, 17.5 have two, and 4.21 have three or more. So in the second table, I just multiply the 49 units by each of those, and in the bottom line of that second table, it shows that based on that Fall River average, there would be 50 vehicles owned by the um, tenants. So on the second page, I'm showing renters own vehicles, 50, allotment for visitors, eight, bank employees, two, bank customers, two, not as part of the drive-in, two, showing a total peak demand of 62 and the on-site parking they were providing is 62 um, and I note in the final paragraph that the bank hours tend to be offset from when the tenant demand is that most of the tenants are there nights and weekends uh, and the bank is mostly open during the day so so there is some capability of that um, 
shared parking in addition to the 17 off site non metered parking spaces and when the attachment I'm just showing the uh, the actual uh, data source I think that's it for the factual presentation. Um, uh, we can talk about parking in terms of the, the legal application, if you'd like, or if the board has questions regarding some of the facts concerning the property, we could try to answer those as well. And members of the board have questions? No, I just, I was very concerned when I saw the parking at first, but then, and, and to make sure that this concept was consistent with the waterfront plans. Yes. And you know, this afternoon, which will be read into the record on the note, we, we received notice from, uh, of, of the support of the uh, community development that, and that, or the development agency uh, supporting this proposal. And yeah, you know, I am not going to question. Uh, this is bringing in a whole new concept of trying to bring in a different population into the city of Fall River. And, you know, I'm not going to question the wisdom of Mr. Karam in, in, in wanting, you know, thinking that this will work, because I know that if he had to, he'll build another garage on top of something to, if it doesn't work, because it will be fully occupied. And the last thing he wants, I mean, the failure of this doesn't work will be on him and, and not, not on anyone else. And I know that would never happen. So. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Are there any questions by members of the board? All right, this is the special permit uh, proceeding under Chapter 40A, Section 9. This board, uh, zoning ordinances or bylaws may provide that special permits may be granted for multifamily residential use in non-residentially zoned areas where the public good would be served. And after a finding by the special permit granting authority that such non-residentially zoned area would not be adversely affected by such a residential use and that permitted uses in such a zone are not noxious to multifamily use so this would be a two-prong um, test for this board um, is there anyone here in favor of this petition Madam Chair I'm Bob Karen and my life I have, I have bought in, I'm 75 years old, and I used to sit where you sat when Roof and Pistol was the man. So that's how far along I, I was on your So I know these are all tough decisions for you. The city is going to change on the Wall Street. It's not going to change all of the forward, but it's going to change on the Wall Street. As the opportunities arise, like the new building that came up with the Agape and what have you, and where they're taking the other area, we're going to have the parking for, for the train. And the train, people are going to come in. And we've done a lot of studies, and a lot of those people are going to be young professionals. When we say other people coming from out of town, we don't just think it's going to be people without jobs coming from out of town. There's going to be people that are choosing the economics of the waterfront of Fall River versus the economics of the waterfront of Providence or Newport or elsewhere. And we're going to be a beacon for kids that either grew up here that come back home and want to live in a different way, or people that want to move here. And, and it, it, I don't know, some of the testimonials are from the restaurants and the people who are supporting our project. They know that putting that those houses and those units there, the people living there, they're going to cross that street up the street and go across. And we're ahead of the game. And we're taking a shot because I don't think it's coming down. It's the, the road's not coming down for about four years. And we're saying we want to be the first one there. We want to put our stake on the ground and establish ourselves with a new way of living in Fall River for people who aren't going to live in a four-bedroom apartment or someplace else like that. And I think we've done it right. We've hired great architects. And I think this project is going to be very, very good for the city and good for the Wall Street. That's what I'm getting All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I, if I may, there were letters. I'm not sure they all were. But we have you one, one from Greater Fall River. Yeah, there's also a letter of support from you know, the Co. Uh, Riverview Professional Building, which is a professional building of the state, and uh, Technicor, which is the very right. work. Well, submitted to us. <laughs> we did receive a, a letter from the Greater Fall River Development Corporation. Uh, signed by uh, our Christian LaFrance, who's the president to members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. On behalf of the Greater Fall River Development Corporation, I write in support of the proposal by BCPPK to construct a six-story mixed-use building with commercial
commercial use of the first floor and residential units on the remaining floors at the property located at the corner of Duval Street and Turner Street. The commitment to market great housing for nearly all of the residential units is part of a forward-looking vision of what Fall River can become. I reviewed the plans and the proposal and believe that once constructed, the project will become an excellent addition to the city's waterfront area and will do much to further the city's vision for its waterfront development. We give our enthusiastic support to the project in spite of the limited on-site parking. We are all too keenly aware of the parking issues in and near the city's waterfront area. Parking, however, is necessarily and inherently restricted in the waterfront area. There simply is not sufficient land to encourage the development that the district contemplates by its zoning ordinances and its waterfront development plans. The parking criteria as required by the city is strictly adhered to. Limited parking should not become a tool for municipal discouragement of projected proposals that otherwise advance sound development along the city's waterfront corridor. Developers with a reputation for excellent projects, sound investments, and good property management overcome many obstacles to realize their visions. Bay Coast Bank and Robert Karam, the principals of BCBBK, have a long and proven track record in investing literally millions of dollars in projects in the city of Fall River. Projects that are viable, sustainable, and projects the city, projects the city can be proud of. Their proven track record of successful developments demonstrates that once built, the project will undoubtedly be successful and an asset to our city. We urge the zoning forward appeals consider favorably the petition signed our Christian France. We're now submitting three additional letters. The next one is from the Cove, the restaurant and marina, signed by Peter Cabral. Um, to members of the Zoning Board of Appeals on behalf of the Cove Restaurant and Marina. I write in support of the proposal by BCBBK to construct a six-story mixed-use building with commercial use of the first floor and residential units on the remaining floors at the property located at the corner of Duval Street and Turner Street. The commitment to market rate housing for nearly all of the residential units is part of a forward-looking vision for what Fall River can become. I reviewed the plans and the proposal and believe that once constructed, the project will become an excellent addition to the city's waterfront area and will do much to further the city's vision for its waterfront development. We give our enthusiastic support to the project in spite of the limited on-site parking. We are all too keenly aware of the parking issues in and near the city's waterfront area. Parking, however, is necessarily and inherently restricted in waterfront area. There simply is not sufficient land to encourage the development that the district contemplates by its zoning ordinances and its waterfront development plans if the parking criteria as required by the city is strictly adhered to. Limited parking should not become a tool for municipal discouragement of project proposals that otherwise advance sound development along the city's waterfront corridor. Developers with reputation for excellent projects, sound investments, and good property management overcome many obstacles to realize their visions. Bay Coast Bank and Robert Karam, the principals of BCPBK, have a long and proven track record in investing literally millions of dollars in projects in the city of Fall River, projects that are viable, sustainable, and projects the city can be proud of. Their proven track record of successful developments demonstrates that once built, the project will undoubtedly be successful and an asset to our city. We urge the Zoning Board of Appeals to consider favorably the petition. Madam Chair, we would, we would stipulate that each of the letters are substantially identical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They want to support it, but they don't want to write the letters. <laughs> Somebody wrote it. All right, the Someone next, it. I will not, it's, it is word for word almost the same. Uh, Riverview Professional Building, that is also submitted by Peter Cabral. And then a letter of support from Philip Pelletier, CEO. Um, of Technicor Contracting Incorporated. Again, the language is uh, almost verbatim in support. Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Do any members of the board have questions? Any further questions uh, regarding the parking or other issues? Okay, then at this point, um, considering this is the two-prong test, um, the first part being there has to be a finding by this board that the special permit granting authority that such non-residentially zoned area would not be adversely affected by such a residential use. I move that uh, the board finds that the 
use of this property as presented would not be that, or more detrimental to the area and that it should be approved for a special permit. Okay. And you are applying for two special permits, so the first one we're dealing with would be the... Um, 49 units. The 49 yes. units, yes. Is okay, there? Well, on that, go ahead, let me continue oh. and then with an amendment that uh, that we approve it subject to the uh, requested revision. If, if I could put you on hold for now, yeah. sorry, I forgot to ask uh, Mr. There. Roth if he has any uh, comments yeah. about I just want to say that the administration is in support of this application. Uh, you've got an area of town that is somewhat blighted um, and is in going to be in significant transition with when Route 79 is uh, taken down to a boulevard this area will not be cut off from the water. The waterfront and uh, develop urban renewal plan envisions this type of development. Uh, this development is also very close to the uh, contemplated uh, commuter rail station. It's within, uh, it's within uh, a few hundred yards of a, a walking distance, which is well within um, the standard commuter uh, section. I did want to point out that you do have two special permits in front of you. Uh, the one that you're getting ready to deal with is regarding the use um, and uh, now that with the revision uh, and I can talk about the on the parking um, so the decision you would need to make I recommend for the special permit on the use is is that the uh, uh, 14 two bedrooms and the 39 one bedroom units 35. I'm sorry 35 for a total of 49 units uh, market rate housing units per Mass General Law Chapter 40B in their application uh, would meet the test and, and requirement and I would request that it be specific to the application that they submitted just switching correcting the numbers that, that's exactly where I was okay yeah, um, with that second portion uh, that uh, that this approval is subject to a revision and a resubmission of the application to call for uh, 35 one bedroom uh, units, 14 two bedroom units for a total of 49 units. Uh, and per their application, market rate units at, per at, at market rate. Oh, well, 80% market yeah. rate. Yes, yeah. yes, Mr. Yes. So, just if, for clarification, I think the just so I understand, the motion is... Well, you've applied for two special permits, correct? Yes, and the motion is on the 49, and yes. the board stipulation is going to be that it will be 14 two-bedrooms and 35 one-bedrooms. Yes. 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 Thank you. So yes. we'll vote on that first special permit request. There's been a motion by Mr. Hawkins. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? And now the board needs to find on that first special permit request that um, the permitted uses in such a zone are not noxious to multifamily use. Are not noxious to a multifamily use. Is there a motion? I'm so moved. Is there a second? Okay, all those in favor? So then your first special permit request has been granted. We'll now address the second special permit um, that deals with uh, the parking. Um, this plan provides for 62 parking spaces, but what is necessary is, uh, is it 108 Eight. spaces? Yes. So before we vote on that, I would ask Mr. Roth if there's um, any uh, input. In light of the significant change from the 35 one bedroom and 28 two bedroom, um, the reduction that is being looked at is within um, very similar to several other projects that this board or the zoning board has approved in the in the not so distant past, including one just recently a few months ago that provided literally almost one parking space per bedroom. That's essentially almost what this property does, um, and that uh, we're. We feel that uh, that the ratio, the uh, dynamics of the type of commercial use that is here, uh, you're not going to get a lot of people going to the the bank. It's primarily drive-through, only two employees, um, and that we would uh, 
recommend approval on the special permit. Um, the one, uh, there's several requirements that I would request requiring site plan review. It is required, but we want to stipulate requiring site plan review. Um, requiring that the lots be consolidated. You can do that through an 81X or a form A. Okay. It's in your application, you're gonna do it. We just wanna reiterate it in the condition. And that, uh, I'm, I haven't driven by in a while. Is there still a building on site? No. No. Both okay, all buildings have been demolished? Yep. Because there's a, typically a standard condition that buildings be demolished, but that is not applicable. So the two conditions that we would request would be requiring site plan review and that the lots be consolidated. And uh, in light of the change of the application, the uh, the parking appeal is sufficient. All right, do I have a member of the board with a motion that this special permit um, would, would uh, not be adversely affected by such a residential use? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? And the second prong of this test, uh, we have to find that permitted uses in such a zone are not noxious for multifamily use. So second. All those in favor? It's been a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Special no. permit conditions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we could just reopen, I'm sorry. Oh. I can't thank you yet. We didn't have those two conditions included in the motion. So amendment. Oh. I'm sorry. Site plan. Site plan review and the lots be consolidated. Except. Is that? Yes. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll make my motion for that. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Agenda yeah. item number four, citizen input. Nobody has signed up for citizen input. And then agenda item number five, approval of minutes from the June 20th, 2019 meeting. Home approval of the June 20th. The waiver of the meeting and approval of the June 20th meeting. Second. That was good. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Minister approves. We are now officially adjourned for the evening.